This is just a crazy story from 2004 when I was breeding and I had the top winning female in Canada. She wasn't shown a lot. She also was number nine all breed in 2001. She had boxes of group first placements of ribbons. She went down to the States and when she was down there, a lot of the people who had the top dogs down there would pull their dogs out of the show so they didn't have to compete with her. She pretty much won best of breed every time and if she didn't, she lost to one of the two males that I also owned. She never lost to any other dogs in her career, even though it was very short-lived. She had multi-best in shows, multi-best in specialties. She had tons of excellent ratings by FCI judges. She had nothing less than excellent. American, Canadian, international, Swarba champion, rarities champion. And she did it all in just a very, very limited time of showing. However, I had retired her in 2004 and she'd always been a house pet, lived on the couch, never had been crated, never been kenneled, never been on a tie out, nothing. She'd always been very spoiled and I decided I was going to retire her and I was being very picky where she would go as I wanted her to live a life better than what I was giving her. And I was quite busy with dogs, showing, training, and puppies. So I felt that she could have a better life somewhere else if she was somebody's constant pet. So I had a woman contact me from Connecticut who said that she'd been in love with the dog for years and that she was a groomer and all this stuff. Said she didn't have dogs and, you know, she wanted to buy the dog and give the dog the best home for the rest of her life talked with her for quite a while and then she drove up from Connecticut up to Ontario Canada and it turned out it was a complete scam I didn't see it at the time as I was too trusting she said she didn't want to bring any cash traveling that great of a distance and so I kind of understood being she was female traveling alone so I gave her the benefit of the doubt that she was going to go home and Western Union the money for the dog and we had done different deals I lowered the price she wanted to breed her one time I agreed we agreed on a stud that was in the States that I liked and I was gonna take one puppy and she pretty much was getting the dog for almost next to nothing but then she got back to the States and she was supposed to send the money and I didn't hear from her I it was probably a couple weeks went by and then I finally contacted her to see what was up and she basically told me on the phone that I can go fuck myself I'm not gonna get any money and I'm not gonna get the dog and then I learned who she was and she was some woman running a poppy mill that had been run out of numerous places in Connecticut by the Humane Society for pit bulls, dog de Bordeaux's, kind of corsos and other types of breeds as she was just breeding tons of dogs in her basement she wasn't supplying them with proper care and she kept getting run out of areas the police were well aware of who she was but however because she was in the states and I was in Canada there was almost nothing I could do she showed them a receipt that she paid for the dog she forged my signature she had forged other documents also. Um, however, when the police arrived and the Humane Society down there, she said the dog was no longer on her property. She gave the dog away, didn't know where the dog was. So there was very little I could do. Um, and that's just what happens sometimes when you trust people with dogs. Don't you know, don't complete your transaction until the transaction is complete. And when you're dealing with people and if it's a dog that you consider to be special and you think you're letting it go to go to a better life, it's best to really truly do your research 
And the good thing is, is nowadays with the internet, you really can do your research. Back in 2004, the internet was nowhere near as big as it is today, so you really didn't know who people were to the same extent that you can search people nowadays. But this was a beautiful dog. I had a client in uh, Massachusetts that had one of her puppies, and I had numerous people all over the United States that had come together to try to help get Kenya back. And they were willing to take her and give her a lifetime home. They were willing to take her and send her back to Canada. Everybody was willing to try to get her out of the hands that she unfortunately landed into. And I had one client who had one of her puppies actually drive right to her door and offer her just shy of $10,000 if she would just hand the dog over, no questions asked. And this woman still said, no, I'm not handing the dog over. She's my dog. Nobody's getting her. I have no idea what's ever happened to the woman. She disappeared after that. But it was just one of those lessons learnt. And there was many lessons learnt when it came to dealing with dogs and people involved in dogs. It's one of those things you look back on and the dog should have just stayed with me. She should have never left.